before starting, uh, let me briefly introduce today's speaker. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, today's speaker is uh, Wen Yuan Ai from King's College London. Uh, he received a PhD from Technical University of Munich at 2019. And after that, uh, he worked as a postdoc uh, fellow at the University of Leuven uh, from 2019 to 2021. And now uh, he's working at King's College London as a postdoc research associate. Uh, his main research interests are phase transition in quantum field theory, uh, non equilibrium uh, quantum field theory, and uh, their application to the cosmology. Uh, today, he's going to talk about particle, particle production from oscillating condensate. So, Yuan, uh, please start. Yeah, uh, thank you for the nice introduction. And uh, I'm very happy uh, to, to be here to talk about my uh, recent work. Also, it's a pity that I cannot be, you know, cannot give the talk in person, but um, I hope in the future there will be some opportunity that I can visit um, the Chung'an University at some point. And uh, as, as, uh, as Stan mentioned, I will talk about particle production from oscillating condensates. And uh, this talk is based on a recent work with Ziliang Wang and also an earlier work uh, with Marco de Roos, Jason Graven, and Yang Hai. Um, so before I uh, talk about the physics, please feel free to interrupt me if you have any questions. And if you have any confusion, just because my spoken English, you can also interrupt me. So this is the outline of this uh, talk. I will start with a very brief uh, discussion of the motivations. And then I will review particle production in some simple methods. Well, I would point out some problems with these simple methods. After that, I will then introduce particle production in non-equivalent QFT. Finally, I will give some discussions and uh, our conclusions. Now, in cosmology, there could be many scalar backgrounds. And this uh, scalar backgrounds can be classified by symmetry. In the first class are constant backgrounds, such as the Higgs wave or dark energy. Here by dark energy, I mean some you know, cosmology constant like uh, dark energy, so they are constant. We can also consider time dependent, but especially homogeneous backgrounds like in Phaeton. At the last in recent years, people are quite interested in time dependent, but, especially, but um, uh, spe uh, especially spherical backgrounds such as the boson stars. And with time dependence, it is well known that um, particle production can be induced from uh, these backgrounds. In this talk, we will focus on time independent, but especially homogeneous backgrounds. In particular, we will focus on reheating. Now, here this is a general picture for inflation and reheating. Usually we assume this a scalar field and with such a potential. This, is, this may not be precise, but it's just to show how inflation work. And in this region, the potential is nearly flat. And if the field is located on this point, it would induce inflation and slowly rolls down. When the field arrive, arrive at this point, it would start oscillating. And then um, reheating begins. There are actually two steps for reheating. So when the amplitude, so this is amplitude, means amplitude is large, particle production from the oscillation is non perturbative and it is usually called a preheating. So preheating. Pre <clears throat> so when the amplitude is uh, small, particle production becomes perturbative, and it is sometimes called a perturbative reheating. And in this talk, we will focus on this perturbative 
particle production. Typically, particle production from preheating is much more efficient than in preheating. heating. So the question is, why do we care about preheating? heating? The answer is that uh, preheating preheating determines whether or not preheating is complete. And it, it can also determine some initial conditions after reheating. Now, uh, let us review some particle production in simple methods. So for example, if we consider an interaction, this interaction is very normal, and we have two scalar, phi and chi. And suppose the back um, phi has no vanishing one point function. So here by one point function, I mean, the vacuum expectation value of uh, phi. It's not real vacuum because sometimes we consider uh, the case of finite temperature. And I, I call this Wi-Fi, although sometimes it, it is also pronounced uh, as phi, but to distinguish the background from other field, I call it Wi-Fi, okay? And the suppose if the one point function is non-vanishing, it would induce a time dependent mass term for the field chi. This is a, a full mass for the chi field at a zero temperature, and this is time independent part. This is the time dependent part. But when the time dependent part is bigger than the time indep independent part, uh, particle production is non prohibitive In this region, actually, the particle states of, of the chi field are not well defined because uh, to define particle states, you have you need to um, have constant mass and uh, you uh, have free field, free field theory and you build your fork space. Now, as, even though we still can study particle production in this region by applying the flow cap theory to analyzing the equations of motion for the mode functions. And usually the mode functions takes form of Maxwell equation or Lam equation. Uh, now, if the time dependent part is much smaller than the time independent part, then particle pro production becomes prohibitive. In this region, particle states of chi field are well defined. So we can simply take uh, this as a uh, as, uh, level mass. Now, a simple method is simply to add a friction term to the equation of motion for the background field of Wi-Fi. Here, gamma is taken to be the one particle decay rate. There are some problems in this method. So is this justified? And how to include thermal effects if particle production happens at finite temperature? And um, since gamma is computed in vacuum, it is not sensitive to the evolution of the background field. So how to include back reaction effects? In particular, if there is a Z2 symmetry, so Z2 symmetry is uh, some, you have only five square terms, five, five, five to the fourth terms, okay? If there's Z2 symmetry, the one particle state for phi is stable. In this case, the one particle decay rate is vanishing. But still, the background field, the condensate still decay. Now, there is an improved method, which I call time-dependent probation theory. In this sense, we know that the time-dependent mass term is small compared to the time-independent mass term. Then we can take this term as a probation. Okay, this is just uh, the time-dependent mass term in the Hamiltonian. Okay. Now, we solve this probation at a reading order, we can have the familiar for, for the chi field, right? This is the alienation or creation operators. Then particle production can be described as the transition from the vacuum to the particle states. For example, this is the transition amplitude and I is the vacuum and F, for example, we can take two particle states of chi field. With some, with some computations, for harmonic condensate alterations, you can obtain 
the decay rate uh, from the background field fine to two chi particles is given by this formula. Uh, also, this is uh, studied in this paper, but um, it's somehow um, lived for a type of two, a factor of two in this formula. And also we, in our paper, we also have the same uh, result for the decay rate. This method is much more justified, but still, for now, it has not included thermal effects and the back reaction effects. Later, I will discuss how to describe particle production in non-equilibrium cavity, and I will show you how to recover these results uh, in particular limits. Also, I would, I would like to mention that in this example, I already talked about the decay of background field phi to Kai Kai, but also the background field phi can decay to the phi particles. So when you expand the phi about the background field, and then you still have the fluctuations, and then you have the particle state for the fluctuation uh, field. Now, uh, we will go to the center part of this talk. In non equivalent KFP, uh, we, study, we study some, sorry, so, so non equivalent KFT is an approach to derive the equations of motion for some non equivalent um, systems from first principles. So we do not guess the equation of motion, we just derive it from the very fundamental level. And in non-equilibrium KFT, observables are given by the trace of the energy density times the operator. The energy density is given as the initial time. It can be pure or mixed or mixed. And then in Heisenberg picture, the operator is time dependent. This is just equivalent to the Schrodinger equation. In the Schrodinger, now in the Schrodinger picture, Actually, you, you find that the state evolved from the initial time, Ti, forward to T, right? And then backward to Ti again. So, so for example, these, these observables can be obtained by the generating functional, this general function formulated as a path integral on a closed path. Here the C is a closed path. As I see, so as, as you may guess from this uh, expression, th this one, you should have some um, you know, time pass like from Ti to T and come back. So why is this a strategy close to pass? This is because non-equilibrium KFT is an initial problem. It's a different from the conventional zero temperature KFT. We now study some, you know, we, we already know the initial state and uh, the state at other times can already be determined by the evolution. However, at zero temperature, we usually study, study some transition amplitude of uh, asymptotic states. So here we have the in in transition amplitude, but at zero temperature, we have the in out transition amplitude. Okay. Now, to derive the equation of motion for the condensate, namely the background field. We first define the generating functional with source. Okay, so here I should also like this should write uh, uh, the control C, but you should understand that this is not, not uh, um, uh, the normal generating functional, but also it is defined on the closed control. And then the one point function is given by the derivative of the Swinger, swinger functional with respect to the source. Then to have an equation of motion for the one point function, we need to define the one particle irreducible effect action. This is just the Lachange transform of the swinger functional. With this effect action, then um, equation of motion for the background field phi is given by this uh, equation. And without external source, this term is zero, okay? Now, every quantum corrections to the classical equation of motion 
are included in the effect action. You can compute the effect action at any loop order. And the higher loop order you can compute, the more corner corrections you have to the classic equation of motion of Wi-Fi. <clears throat> Now, we will consider the following two scalar model. So we have two scalar phi and chi, and now uh, we have means the potential has a Z2 symmetry. So we have the normal phi force and chi force, and also the coupling, uh, the interaction between phi and chi is like is is system. And this model is actually very popular in phenomenological studies. If you take if you take phi one scalar field phi to be the inflaton and chi to be the Higgs, then it is called Higgs portal inflation. Okay, if you take phi to be the Higgs and chi to be the dark matter, then it is a uh, one of the Higgs portal dark, mo dark, dark matter models. Also, you can take phi to be the inflaton and chi to be the dark matter. It is sometimes called inflaton dark matter. And since phi field has a non-vanishing one-point function, we need to expand phi about its one-point function. So still you have the, you know, as I mentioned, this is the fluctuation, fluctuations about the background field. And now the action can be written as two terms. This term is an, an action for the background field of Wi-Fi. Every, every term is about Wi-Fi. And this term is the action about the fluctuations. We have two fields, phi and chi as the fluctuations, right? And now, now you find that uh, in, the, in the action for the fluctuations, you have some um, background field dependent terms. Here, this is time dependent. And you also have some um, vertices which also depend on the background field, background field. In in our uh, because we are uh, interested in the probability of particle production, as we mentioned, we require this term is small compared to the time independent part, and also this term is small small compared to the time independent mass term for the time. Then we will take this term, the phi squared, and what phi squared, phi squared or Wi-Fi squared, chi squared as vertices. So it's, it's the same as this terms. And with this action, we can have a truncated effect action. Now, uh, this plus and minus comes from the closed time pass, okay? But never mind, um, this is just uh, the classical contribution. So, so for the effect action, you first have the class uh, uh, contribution and you have some loop corrections. Here I just show uh, in five diagrams and a cross, a field cross denotes uh, the background field, the condensate, okay? So the, here the vertices are, uh, is this vert vertex is attached by two background field, actually two background field mode. <clears throat> And a solid line is the propagator for the field phi, for this, for this phi, okay, the fluctuation phi. And a dashed line is the propagator for the field chi. So in the first line, it is one loop corrections. It is local. And we know that these two diagrams give rise to corrections to the mass term. At a finite temperature, it also induces uh, the you know fine, uh, thermal uh, mass, 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 masses. In the second and the third line are non-local. So by non-local, it means that you know see, you see that um, the vertices are not at the same point. Now these two diagrams correspond to self energy, and these two diagrams correspond to proper four vertex functions. We will see that these two diagrams are very important to, in, to give us the particle production. On this um, action, 
we can obtain our equation of motion. These three, these four terms are classical. Here we have also added the Hubble friction term because we will also consider the universe expansion. And non-trivial terms are from these two terms. And this is this term correspond to the self energy come from these two diagrams. And this term correspond to the proper for what is for, for vortex and it comes from these two diagrams. Well, here, these two diagrams have been absorbed into the master. Okay, so now I write the capital mass, capital M. And in our work, we show how to solve this equation of motion perturbatively. But in this talk, I will, I will not, not discuss how to um, solve this equation, but we will simply show you the uh, solutions. The solutions take the general form. Phi, the background, the evolution of the condensate equals to A of T times uh, cosine function. The A of T is the envelope function. It tells you how the amplitude decays. And we will see that um, contractions will also have induced and time dependent correction to the frequency. Now, without FT, we just have the classical motion. It's, it's, it's just a, it's, it's a harmonic oscillation, oscillation means frequency M5. Of course, uh, M5 has uh, you know, corrections from these two diagrams. And in, this, um, in, in the solutions, FT and AT will depend on some quantities. In particular, they will actually depend on the self energy and the forward vortex. And we have defined some quantities, basically they are the real part of the self energy and the imagined part of the self energy. Also the real part of the proper forward vortex function and the imagined part of the proper forward vortex function. Here tilde means the Fourier transform. Okay, so you have some function here and then you take the Fourier transform and you, you evaluate the Fourier transform of the self energy at the frequency m5 and the proper forward function at frequency 2 m5. And here, why this is m5 actually is, uh, is can be understood uh, from this, from this uh, diagram. You see that um, for the set energy, every vertex is attached with one condensed quantum or mode. And every mode of the background field has energy m5. So you can imagine the condensate as a collection of, um, of zero momentum quantums, okay? So, so is that, you see that the energy, because this is external and the energy is M5, so you need to evaluate your self energy at M5. Here you can, you need to evaluate your proper vertex function at a two M5, uh, but also because no, because some in the life, it also happens that you need a system. Now, I would like to uh, emphasize that here, the real part of the self energy or the proper four values function will, will induce corrections for the frequency for this part, while the imagined part, imagined part, gamma, the sigma, imagined part of self energy, gamma, and the imaginary part of the proper work forward is for, for vertex sigma will um, induce dissipation. Okay, so they will appear in the envelope function A of T. Now, before I show you the solutions, I will first discuss a microscopic interpretation for the damping uh, of the oscillations. At a zero temperature, we know that uh, imagine part of a diagram. So for example, we, if you consider a diagram, this diagram, and then the, the incoming and, and the outcoming particles are the same. Then the imagine part of this diagram actually gives the decay probability from the in, incoming particles to the particles in the loop. This is called optical theory. So in this case, you need to color the diagram and put 
the particles in the loop on shell, okay? So in, in this uh, equation. And <clears throat> so now we have similar microscopic interpretation for the imagined part of the safe energy, okay? But now the cutting rules, this is called, this is called cutting, cutting rule. The cutting rules at finite temperature are more co com complicated. In this case, you actually can put some particle in the loop to the left, okay? For example, in this process, you put one particle fine to the left. So this can describe some interaction with some process. A background field fine, one fine. Here you have uh, one background field mode and uh, one incoming particle fine to two five particles. Why you have some, uh, why you can have um, particle state uh, on the left? Because at a final temperature, we have already a plasma. It is not like the vacuum. Now we have a plasma and in the plasma, you already have many particles. So it is possible for the condenser to find a particle fine and scatter with the particle fine into two particles, okay? Right, the simplest, the simplest process from the decay from the one background field mode to three five particles cannot be on shear, cannot satisfy the on shear conditions. Why? Because the energy for the background field, field is M5. So it, 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 it oscillates with the frequency M5, right? And every particle in the loop is a fine particle and it has at least energy M5. So in total, the simplest process decay from one background field to three particles, you have at least three M5 here. So they are they cannot satisfy uh, the on shear conditions. Also, if you put two five particles, one, two, to the left, and uh, you have one particle as a daughter particle, this process can also satisfy the on shear condition. A similar case for the for this diagram, you can simply put one kind of particle to the left, or you put one five particle to the left. The in total, the imagined part of the self energy gives you three decay channels. Decay channels in every process, it is a decay of the condensate. Okay, so the mode of the condensate does not um, does not increase. So for every for every process, you you have one normal particle annually annihilate one condensate mode. All these processes are called Landau damping. They are they disappear at a zero temperature because at a zero temperature, you, the background field cannot find a particle fine. There's no plasma. So at a zero temperature, gamma vanishes. Now, for for the, the, the station is similar for the proper forward function. The imagined part of the proper forward function sigma gives you two decay channels. In this case, these two processes survive at a zero temperature because at a zero temperature, they can be on shear, right? So you have um, the energy of so these two particles is M5 and uh, you simply have this, um, for example, if you have the zero moment of the five particles, then this process can be on shear. And also this, this process can be on shear if the mass of the chi particle is smaller than the mass of the five particle then this M5, okay? So this is the microscopic interpretation um, for, the, for, for, for the dissipation, for, for the damping of the, of the uh, background field motion, as we will see. Now, now I show you the solution that we obtained for the static universe. So in this case, the harbor uh, constant is vanishing. This is simply a solution for the flat space time. So this is, we will focus on this part. As we say, this is the envelope function. And you see that it depends on the gamma, gamma, the imagined part of self-energy and the sigma. 
the imagined part of the proper forward function. You see that non-vanish gamma induces an exponential decay. This is exp exponential decay, while a non-vanishing sigma induces, induces a power law decay. It is not exponential. It's not, uh, if you, for example, if you simply consider some uh, equation motion with the friction term, gamma phi dot term, you, you will always, you will always obtain an exp exponential decay, but this is not correct. Now, actually I can explain why gamma induces an exponential decay, why sigma induces power decay. This is because in the, in the equation of motion, this term is linear. And we, we, we know that a linear term can induce an ex exponential decay. However, this term is not linear. It's cubic in, in, in the background of field fine. So in general, it induces some uh, power law uh, evolution for the for the background field, right? <clears throat> now, with this uh, solution, we are the how we can derive the the result, the decay rate that we discussed for the time uh, dependent perturbation theorem. To do that, we let the temperature to be zero. Sorry. We let the T to be zero. Then as we said, gamma vanishes because the step energy, the decay channels for the, for the gamma decay channels cannot be on shear. Um, the gamma vanishes and then this envelope function becomes this simple form, okay? And now again, we will consider early times. So by early times, we will take T small. And if T is small, then A of T, can be expanded, Taylor expanded, right? Here, uh, phi, phi naught is simply a naught because you know, no, so this is just a phi equal to at times cosine ft plus m phi t. And this is, will give you the phi naught, okay? So this term at a small t, for small t, Taylor expanded to be this expression. And from this expression, you see that the uh, amplitude decays. So this, you can inform the decay rate from this term, right? And this is the decay rate for the condensed evolution. However, the decay rate of, uh, of gamma um, phi is defined as the decay rate for the energy density. And the energy density is proportional to phi squared. So the decay rate is equal to sigma phi naught squared, right? But this is uh, only true in all cases or two at a zero temperature and for early times. Now we see, let, let us see how this result is, is, uh, is the result that we discussed. This is uh, the expression for the imagined part of the proper for various function. Right? This is very general. You, have, you can, you actually you can have uh, uh, some effects already. And now if you take P to be zero, the lambda phi to be zero. I will, I will tell you why we take lambda phi to be zero. Then you get a sigma. You, you can get a, from this expression and the sigma, the definition of sigma. You can get a, your sigma as, as, as a result of this, okay? And if you plug sigma to this term, then you get, you get a precisely this result. Okay, that's what we derived before, not derived, we, we should before. Okay. Why we take lambda phi to do, to do this comparison? Why do we take lambda phi to be zero? Because sigma induces two decay channels, this decay channels and this decay channels. In the example we discussed in the time dependent perturbation, we already discussed this process. We discussed the uh, ch transition from vacuum to two chi particles. Uh, you can also include these uh, processes actually. So if you take lambda phi to zero, then we, we kill this process. And then we are left with these uh, decay channels. And then with these decay channels, we, are, we recover the result discussed earlier. Is there any question or no? Okay, uh, then I will continue. What is the time? <clears throat> Um, now, 
Uh, now let us di discuss the decay of the condensed energy density. From the solutions, you can show that at a large time, the normalized uh, time derivative of the energy density is given by two gamma minus two gamma minus sigma a of t a squared. Now from this expression, you can see that um, if gamma is vanishing, if gamma is vanishing, the energy density still can decay completely because, because this term would not be vanishing unless A is vanishing. A is simply the amplitude of the, of the condensed evolution, okay? <clears throat> and indeed, we check this. So if you take gamma to be vanishing, so we, we, when we take gamma to be vanishing, we actually consider some region, for example, some, some, some temperature in which um, the gamma channels are negligible. So th they can be ignored. And even we take gamma to be vanishing, you, see, you find that the decay of energy condensate, the, sorry, the condensed, condensed energy is complete. It, uh, it goes to zero uh, asymptotically and uh, the energy density of the condensate will be smaller than the energy density of the produced particles. This conclusion is completely different when we consider universe expansion. Okay. Now, this is our solution for the radiation dominated universe. And um, this is our solution. And we, we have to, uh, to have some taste, we plot the evolution of the scalar condensate. Okay, so you see that the, the, the red line is the full solution. It is uh, it's damped, it's a, it's a damping, uh, it's a damped oscillation. And um, the brown line is the damping due to particle production. This is the brown line. And the purple line is the damping due to universe expansion. In this case, evolution of the energy density at a large time is given by three terms. Now you have um, an additional term related to the Hubble uh, constant. Is it now, if you, if you take gamma to be zero, if you do not take gamma to be zero, then of course, the energy density will decay completely, okay? Now, if you take gamma to be zero, it is possible that at a large time, the right hand side will be dominated by the Hubble, the, the this term, the Hubble term. And in this case, particle production is not complete. Now, I show you, I show you an example. Here we consider some non-vanishing gamma, okay? And then we, we find that the energy density decay completely. Uh, it goes to zero at a large time. If you take gamma to be vanishing, then the energy density of the condensate will never below the energy density uh, from, of the produced particles, right? <clears throat> and in this case, there will be a problem for, for heating. If this is the case, then it is a problem because we require the energy stored in the inflaton be fully transformed to the normal particles. Now, we also consider matter-dominated universe. Usually for matter-dominated universe, we, um, we usually have um, zero temperature in most cases, but we still, as a, as a theoretical, um, interest, we still consider the solutions. We still derive the solutions. This is the solution for the matter dominated universe. And this is the evolution of the scalar condensate. It's very similar. And still the red line is the full solution, uh, full solution. And the brown and purple line denote the damping due to particle production and due to universe expansion. In this picture, the brown line and the purple line overlap. So you cannot distinguish actually. Here, 
still um, the same conclusion hold for the energy, for the decay of the energy densities. Then the gamma is non vanishing. The decay of the energy density is complete. When gamma is vanishing, mean, meaning that the gamma channels closed are closed, the decay of the energy density is not complete. Now uh, we come to our dis uh, a brief discussions and uh, and the conclusions. So now let me uh, conclude the compares comparison between non equilibrium KFT means the time dependent perturbation theory. So for the time dependent perturbation theory, it is much simpler. You can simply do very simple calculations, but this method does not include the thermal effects and the back reaction, back reaction effects. However, non-equilibrium KFT automatically includes thermal effects and the back reaction effects, but it's much more complicated. <clears throat> there are actually something that we have not yet done. So in this model, I should use the, uh, the closed for expression for the proper for vertex function. Uh, we used uh, that to recover the desired obtained in time dependent perturbations here. But still, the closed for expression for the safe energy for the sunset diagram, for this diagram, sorry. For, for the sunset diagram, it's not known. So if you calculate the safe energy, you have very complicated uh, integrals, especially because you have many uh, Boltzmann distribution functions there. So the closed form expression for the self energy is not known. And this is uh, a progress, so a project in progress. We actually have uh, obtained a closed form expression for the self energy from only the self interactions. So the, the diagram, we have diagram five background field and two or three five particles. So this uh, this diagram evaluated uh, evaluated at M five. It is not general. And also, if you want to study perturbative reheating, then actually you need to check the evolution of the temperature. And this is not done in our in this work, <clears throat> in this talk. At, at last, I would like to mention a potential application. So I think uh, it is possible to apply the method discussed here to perturbative dark matter production from oscillating inflator, being thermal effects and the back reaction effects taken into account. So basically, I would like to uh, repeat some work given uh, by these authors. <clears throat> and I, I, I go maybe a little bit fast. So now I, I will give the conclusions for this talk. So in this work, we obtained a narrative solutions for the evolution of the oscillating scalar condensate in static, radiation dominated, and matter dominated flat FLRW universe in the small field region. So by, by small field region, I actually mean the time dependent mass term is smaller, much smaller than time independent mass term. So we take the time dependent mass term as, uh, as vertices, okay? And then we found that the gamma channels are essential to ensure a complete decay of the inflaton condensate in the Z2 symmetric two scale model. And also the gamma channels are long down damping and they present only at a finite temperature. And at last, I hope I have, uh, um, I have convinced you that non-equilibrium, although it's much more complicated, but it still deserves to be used for reheating because it gives us um, a result, a self-consistent result with some effects and back reaction effects taking into, into account. At the last, I would like to mention that um, all the solutions, analytic, analytic solutions, maybe here this analytic solutions, 
this solution is analytic, but we still, we check, we check the, the, the solution with numeric calculation. So we, check, we, can, we solve this equation of motion numerically and compare our analytic solution. And we found amazing um, agreement between these two solutions. Um, uh, yeah, and that's, that's basically all the, all the I would like to say. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I'll probably go too far. Thank you very much uh, for a nice talk. So now it's time for a uh, question and discussion. Uh, okay, uh, Kim, please. Hello. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much for nice talk. Uh, I have one question on this uh, your uh, self energy part. And yeah. okay, let me focus on for simplest just uh, self energy. Mm -hmm. uh, you have this. Uh, a previous slide, previous. Equation, uh, the equation, equation, uh, equation of motion for the uh, condensate. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, that one, this one, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, this is a, uh, okay, you have this uh, non local, generically complex valued non local uh, effective action and the corresponding uh, Euler Lagrange equations, which mm -hmm. give rise to this, uh, you know, non local term, uh, which eventually give rise to this, uh, you know, exponential decay. Uh, could you uh, get the uh, the whole physics just by replacing uh, this self energy part by a simple uh, friction term, like uh, at least for the physics of this uh, evolution of the condensate? Uh, as the gamma yes, times so by that. Exactly. So if actually if you um, ignore this term. Yeah. Okay. Let me for simple. Let me ignore this uh, four vortex terms. Let's suppose so, that you you consider theory without any pop of text, for instance. Exactly. So if you if you ignore this term, mm -hmm. it's possible to um to derive the the same evolution of the condensate by a normal friction term because you know that uh, that term also induces an exponential decay. Yes, yes you're right. Yeah. So, so that the, you know, of course, the, this is a kind of a rigorous way. I mean, formally, you define this. Uh, in the effective action, mm -hmm. which involves this non local term. Uh, do you have any uh, simple physical argument why, uh, in this case, for instance, in finite temperature case, you mm -hmm. have this uh, you know, non local uh, self energy part? And in zero so, temperature uh, limit, uh, you know, if you integrate out all this, the, for instance, the, just in conventional Wilsonian sense, if you integrate out the all the heavy degree of freedom or High momentum mode, you are left with uh, you know essentially local. I mean the effective action which you can expand in power of derivative. But in this case, the, uh, you have quite non-local terms. Uh, I would suspect that this is the case only for the uh, finite temperature with, with non-zero temperature limit. Well, I think I think these diagrams mm. um, appear. Mm -hmm. Even in in conventional zero temperature KFT, that's right. They, that's uh, right. Yeah, so they also appear, mm -hmm. and and here we do not uh, consider if, if effective efficiency. So we do not actually in integrate any heavy degrees of freedom. We simply consider right. this very simple uh, two case. Two or still, even in zero temperature case, you have this non-local term. Yes, yes, this is still. But, but of course, the you know, gamma is vanishing, as you said. Yeah. Uh, and and also I uh, uh, sorry I have to um, add uh, some something here. So may I say that if you ignore this term, you can obtain the Markovian equation motion with a friction term. Mm -hmm. This is not rigorous. It's not true because uh, this term is mm -hmm. is no longer in time. It carries some memory effects. So you, so it depends on the the the, the state of of at early times. But wow. here you can. But here we actually did some approximation. We um, we we 
we somehow this is called a uh, Markovianization. We we did some approximation and then we ignore some memory effects and then you can obtain the Markovian equation means affliction term, the gamma phi dollar term. Oh, I see. Oh, then uh, is there any systematic way to? I mean, okay, you said you take a certain approximation. Yeah. Uh, which ignore this uh, memory part yes, in yes. this uh, evolution. Uh, then what? Uh, what would guarantee that the, you can safely ignore this memory part? I mean, in each limit, uh, the memory part, you can safely ignore the memory part? Yes, this is, uh, th th this is actually not always true, but uh, it assumes that, um, it assumes that uh, the decay of the amplitude is very small. So it's kind of... Um, sorry, you know, sorry, I, I missed the, the The decay of the amplitude. Decay of the amplitude, yeah. The, it's very slow. So very slow. Um, gamma is very small. Okay. It, it's very small. So for every single oscillation, uh -huh. you can do some expansion, so time expansion, and uh -huh. then and in these terms, and then also, um, yeah, and and actually, so we simply ignore the memory phase. Um, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure. So in all here, we simply argue that uh, uh, assume that uh, assume that the memory phase is not uh, is not so important, and we ignore we ignore it, and we take a ti effectively yeah. to be minus infinity. Then in this case, you get the normal Fourier transform. Otherwise, Sorry, if, if you take ti as what we take ti effectively to be minus infinity. Minus infinity. Okay. Is then it, that that. Is it, yeah, it means that uh, it, it means that uh, the, the initial state is still at the infinite far past. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the memory phase is kind of uh, you know. Oh, is, I uh, see. Okay, okay. So that's the yeah. limit that. Uh, in this but, case, but, you get the normal. So in this way, you can get the normal Fourier transform. Otherwise, it is not the Fourier transform because the lower integrand uh, integrand is the bond is not at a minus infinity. Oh, so it, then it, what is the, what is the, your TI in this equation then? Yeah, TI. So for every uh, non-equivalent system, uh -huh. it is characterized by a by a density matrix given at a, some initial time, and oh, then you okay. evolve evolve mm -hmm. your system. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any question or comment? Thank you for your nice talk. Uh, so you, in your model for inflation or scalar condensate, you assume the G2 symmetry. Yeah. So there are some models, uh, I mean, with inflaton dark matter, right? There are some other with inflaton dark matter. Uh, yeah. In the case, you don't expect, uh, I mean, the reading is not complete according to your uh, result, right? Okay. So that is the gamma zero limit is zero temperature, right? Okay. Yeah, so if you if you turn on non-zero temperature, uh, is it still possible to uh, make uh, reheating complete? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, yeah. if you you showed several plots for non-zero gamma and yeah. for gamma equal to zero, right? Yes. So when the gamma is non-zero, then still you have a G two parity. Mm -hmm. You still have a G2 uh, uh, symmetry uh, in the potential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so in this case, so um, if you start, if the reheating start at a zero temperature, mm -hmm. then the reheating is not complete. Mm -hmm. However, as I mentioned, you actually have non perturbative particle production, and all I thought about is about perturbative uh, particle pr production. So mm -hmm. we know that we have the the process called preheating, mm -hmm. which is uh, which is uh, which happened, which is uh, induced by the parametric resonance. It's not uh, you cannot mm -hmm. uh, do an analysis like this, mm -hmm. and you you need to uh, analyze the Maxwell equation or or something for the mm -hmm. mode functions. In this case, you can have particle production, and also I think Oleg the Lebedeff mm -hmm. uh, performed some lattice simulations for the. For this uh, non perturbative particle production. Mm. Uh, yeah. So, in, in this case, gamma 
you uh, is cal calculable quantity in your case, right? This uh, yeah. small gamma is calculable so, uh, quantity. So gamma, gamma, yeah. So here is the gamma is taken to be non-vanishing, and here we just take gamma to be zero. In this mm -hmm. case, we simply assume that the temperature is very known and the gamma channels are closed. Then the gamma is zero. And in this oh. case, we assume that uh, the heating has already produced I see you, plasma. You, I see. You assume that the non-zero temperature. Yeah, yeah. From right. the beginning, right. I see. Yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I see you need to rely on parametric resonance. Yes, yes. Another right. temperature first, and then, okay, I see. Precisely, it's, precisely. It's interesting, yeah. So, because the, I think that Oleg discussed about that a dark universe scenario might be <laughs> uh, implanted condensed state doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. so, so, the reading is not complete. So, we are always in the dark universe, something like that. Mm -hmm. So this scenario could be avoided, right? Somehow. Yeah. Yeah. If you I consider see. preheating, yes. Mm, I see. Okay. It's very interesting. This uh, calculation, uh, it's portable calculation. But uh, do you have some story of, about another question? Do you have any uh, some significant effect? You uh, talked about FLW universe. Do you yeah. have it? Uh, I mean this. It's not in Platon anymore, right? It's in Platon. You know, the reheating is complete well before. Uh, but do you have a, a particular, do you have in mind a particular application of this observed result? Uh, so sorry, so I'm not sure I, I understood it. So do you have in mind uh, uh, some any, application, any, right? any particular uh, application of this result? Uh, yes, I, I see. It's, it's actually, um, I saw uh, a paper by uh, these guys. I guess you, uh, you might know this. I don't know. So um, these guys, they also discussed the you know, dark matter production, also probative dark matter production from oscillating inflaton. And I, if I if I understood correctly, they also they do not use no equilibrium uh, methods, and we, they simply use some you know the simple methods. And I hope we can apply our results uh, to repeat um, the work by these guys and also by I mean so you are you so the paper you you did is focused on the R squared um, uh, inflation. Uh, so, mm -hmm. I, so this is the particular application I'd like to actually to explore. Mm, I see. Okay. And also, um, I tried to um, I tried to also to apply this method to particle production for bottom stars, but however, for bottom stars, it is not homogeneous. It is uh, spherical, and this makes uh, things very complicated because you cannot take. You can, this is the fight, the background field depends on T and also R. Mm. And this is not a one ordinary uh, differential, it's not one differential equation, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a car part, it's, a two, 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 it's very complicated. Mm. <clears throat> I see. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Is there any other question? I'm oh, sorry, I just missed the, the uh, argument. Uh, so may I confirm that the, uh, you said that the, in your plot, gamma equal to zero case corresponds to the zero temperature case? Uh, wait, uh, sorry. Um, uh, so you mean, can you, say it, can you say it again? I'm sorry, I missed it. Uh, just uh, in your put, in your plot, as Professor Hume maybe said, in your plot, you compare the gamma equal zero case and the gamma equal non zero case, and uh, compare the particle production and the uh, reheating density is decreasing in your maybe <laughs> in your plot, uh, gamma equal zero case and gamma non zero case in your uh, inflaton density dropping and the production is increasing 
、あのユーコンピューターガンマイ、あ、いや、えっと、えっと、えっと、ガンマイコールゼロ、ケースコリスポンスとザゼロテンパッチャー。いいですか So,、uh, here, actually, so let, let me take the radiation dominated universe as example. So, when I take gamma to be non vanishing, so this is,、uh, we are simply t a k e some gamma as, as some numbers, I mean, on quantitatively correct. And、uh, because, because we do not have a closed form for the self energy, so in our in plotting this diagram, We simply take some numbers, okay? So, some numbers is, is,、uh, is compared to the M5. And in this case, we, and you see that the, the energy decay is complete. And if you take, and in, as a comparison, we simply take, in this case, we consider gamma to be vanishing.、Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure I understood your question.、Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm wondering、uh, in your result. Can apply for the, the ordinary zero temperature case, and、uh, it, it can conclude that for the zero temperature case, the heating never ends. This is your computer. I mean,、uh -huh. I mean the, if, if we don't consider the plasma,、yeah. this corresponds to gamma equals zero case, and、uh, yes. the heating never ends. This is your conclusion. Yes, so if you, if you do not consider the plasma, then gamma is zero. Because, because、yeah. uh, and in this case, the decay, the, the, the decay of energy density never c o m p l e t e And in this case, then it is a problem for this model because the energy stored in the condensate cannot be fully transformed to normal particles. And it would be a problem, actually. So,、um, I guess I'm not very familiar with this, this part, but I guess it is required that the universe, the energy in the universe, must be mostly stored in the normal particles before, at the time of the Big Bang nuclear synthesis. So I'm not sure about that, but this is a requirement. And it, so if, if, if there's no plasma, then this model is problem, problematic. It cannot provide a successful heating. Yes, right. <laughs> So, this is、uh, for general. In general, we can say that. Yes,、generally. but uh, as, as, uh, as uh, we discussed earlier,、uh, for the heating, you also have two steps. So, the first step is、uh, pre heating,、mm -hmm. in, in which case, the particle production is non p e r i p a t i v e It's、mm -hmm. via the so called polymetric resonance. resonance. This, is,、uh, mm -hmm. this part we do not、uh, consider in this talk. And usually, for that, for, for that part,、mm -hmm. uh, we usually require lattice simulations for,、yeah. for, for the particle production.、Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. So, uh, so I, I have a different so, question. Once you... gamma, in decay with gamma, capital gamma also includes the gamma、uh, for non vanishing gamma. Ah, so, sorry? This is a function.、Ah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much.、Uh, yeah, thank you for your question. Thank you. Actually, I, I have a question. You said the, this perturbative effect, I mean, we can do the perturbative analysis、uh, when the time dependent mass is smaller than、uh, the bell mass.、Mm -hmm. And the, what if,、uh, that when the, when the non perturbative effect, such as resonance, Parameter resonance is important.、Uh, is this non equilibrium QFT I and mean, the quantum effect can be also、uh, relevant?、Um, yeah, I think、uh, yeah, that's a very good question. I think Marco sometimes mentioned that he, wanted, he, he somehow he thinks that、um, there is a、um, connection. I mean, so、um, somehow he, he, he thought that、um, for, the, for the broad. So, 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 you know, for the parametric resonance, you have some,、um, I don't know how. So, it, there's two the broad resonance and the narrow resonance. And then somehow, he thought that for the narrow resonance,、uh, all results could capture the, the narrow、uh, resonance case by the summation. You, for example, we have to the small field expansion. And if you 
in some other terms, the, somehow uh, it could be in, in this, if you do the summation and then the, the, the time dependent mass terms somehow can be summed into the, the mass terms. Mm -hmm. And then it also becomes a um, particle production induced by time dependent mass term. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but it's not clear for us. But, but for the broad lessons, we don't think, um, the, oh, yes, in principle, you still can uh, derive the uh, calculate, but still you cannot solve it analytically. You need to solve it uh, numerically. And I think Jürgen Burgers, Jürgen Burgers has done this uh, some time ago, and uh, he studied the parameter lessons in the framework of the um, non equivalent KFT, actually. Mm, yes. I see. You see, interesting, yeah. Is there any other question or comment? Uh, can I ask uh, some uh, elementary question? Uh, maybe uh, uh, I want to confirm some things. So you, you're, uh, uh, you know, uh, when we discussed uh, in flaton decay, we uh, add the uh, decay rate into the equation motion phenomenologically, and then. Uh, so, uh, as you say in, in the introduction, you want to justify such a uh, phenomenological uh, process, right? Yeah. So, uh, I, I wonder, at the equation motion level, can you realize the uh, ordinary uh, Boltzmann equation from your uh, equation motion, including the non-local term? I want to see the correspondence. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that equation. Yes, so... Um... Yeah, you're right. So this equation is usually called a Markovian equation. So mm -hmm. uh, why it is Markovian? Because it has it does not include any memory memory facts. So at every time, it all depends on the the phi, the state phi at a certain time. So it is it's not like the non-local equation of motion like this. Mm -hmm. So so this is non-local. This is yeah. non Markovian. This is called a non-Markovian equation of motion. And then actually you can derive that Markovian equation motion in some cases. This is the slow law case. So if, if for the slow law case, you can do the Tyler expansion here, phi here, and then somehow um, all other terms, if, if you do the final expansion, I thought, and you put some I thought outside, so it's expand at a particular time. And then the, the other, uh, then all the integral is captured by the gamma. Yes, mm -hmm. for the slow law, you can actually, you can actually derive the Markov equation uh, from this um, more fundamental equation motion. I see. Uh, I saw that the last time uh, you uh, denoted by the four vertex, but uh, uh, correspond to the uh, normal decayed capital gamma, no? Because uh, yeah. You should usually this term. So if you if you for example now if I it depends on t t prime, right? And because mm. you consider some equation motion at t, then you expand expand this by phi of t prime, right? Mm. At t. Then you get some phi you do Tyler expansion and you get some phi t and times phi dot of t at that mm. time at t and times t. Uh, pi pi minus t something inside okay and you can so then you obtain some term phi dot term but because because you do integral over t prime then phi dot of phi dot at t can put outside okay mm -hmm. and then other other stuff can be uh can give your your expression of of gamma in this case you get the the Markovian equation motion because the the, the field is the slow lower and you are allowed to do tidal expansion here. But, here, okay, if but, you, but yeah. here, if you do similar things, if you do tidal expansion for the field phi and uh, you put some phi dollar turn outside, then you get mm -hmm. a gamma, which is time dependent. So in the gamma, mm -hmm. in that case, gamma is not a constant. But still, you have you can put your equation motion in the form, in the Markovian form. OK. Uh, can, can I confirm that uh, in your notation, pi uh, is related to gamma, right? And the, yes. the last yes. gamma B, is related to the gamma, yes. And B is related to the sigma, sigma right? Yes, right. 
and, and you uh, show the the sigma correspond to the uh, uh, capital gamma decay rate in in the uh, zero temperature limit. So you you realize the uh, result of each cover at all, right? Uh, yeah. And at that time, uh, I thought the sigma corresponds to the gamma. Is it yeah. correct? As so, so these two statements are not uh, in are not in contradiction with each other. So what I said is that usually, where you only have the linear term, mm -hmm. you can very very simply obtain the Markov equation motion. So as as, uh, as we discussed earlier, if you forget about the, the this term and you you consider slow row and you do tight expansion, and you get the the, the this type of equation motion. Right, it's having equation motion. However, in our comparison, in our comparison, because the zero temperature, these two diagrams does not contribute to product production because they cannot be on shell. Right? Mm -hmm. They cannot be on shell. So, so right at the zero temperature, this term does not contribute to the dissipation, mm -hmm. and we all have this term. Mm -hmm. And what I showed is that what I showed is that um, I do not show that we can obtain. The equation of motion. What I show is that um, from this more, which I would say maybe more self consistent solution, you can obtain the decay rate for early times. So, in this as I said, if you apply that equation of motion, so fine, you, you have a friction gamma phi dollar term, you will obtain an exponential decay. However, as you can see from here, no energy sigma does not give you an exponential decay. It gives a power law decay. So this mm -hmm. is not correct. So that equation motion does not give you the correct decay for a long time. However, for small t, you can do tidal expansion always. And for the tidal expansion, for an exponential function or, or, a power, or this uh, function, you still get the same uh, evolution. You see what I mean? So, so that, that, that equation motion can only give you, can only describe the evolution of the condensate for early times correctly. For large time, it will deviate from this, uh, this solution because that function is, that solution will be an exponential function. And this is, um, this is not, this is a called power law function, right? But, but yes, but, but when t is very small, you can infer, infer that, infer the same result, yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, and also an, another uh, uh, question or co comment is uh, your, uh, how to say, derivation looks rigorous uh, starting from the effective action and then justify the uh, uh, Boltzmann equation normally used. Uh, I wonder, can we apply this uh, method to the uh, March field uh, March in Platon system? Because in my in our previous work, I I was a bit confused with uh, to generalize the Boltzmann equation to the March field in Platon system. Yeah, a good question, a, 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 a good point, but I never thought about it. I, I actually I'm not familiar with the March field equation. I guess in that case uh, could be, but in that case uh, I'm not sure. We have two background field. I think. Uh, in principle, you you can you can always derive the equation motion of spectral field, and you have some something mm -hmm. right. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but I'm I'm not familiar with the multi-field inflation. Mm. Okay, but uh, maybe starting from the effective action, uh, how to say, uh, makes uh, how to say something clear, I guess. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's definitely for multi-field. You still have, for example, you have the background action for phi. And another field fine. Another field maybe let's call it a background field eta, and then you have two two stuff, and then you still can derive some mm -hmm. motion for that maybe. That definitely a good point. Yes. Thank you. And also some uh, other person considered a harmonic uh, potential, right? Not quadratic. Yeah, yeah. But in, yeah. in this case, uh, yeah, of course, technically difficult, but uh, your approach can be how to say applicable. <laughs> That's actually that's actually a very uh, very good question, and uh, I have to I have to tell you that uh, our 
our method to solve this equation of motion relies on the harmonic uh, oscillation, the classical part. This mm -hmm. is, so we assume that uh, the equation of motion is dominated by these two terms. And if, for example, if you, these terms, if, if this term is compatible with, uh, compatible with this term, then we do not know how to obtain analy analytic uh, solutions, mm -hmm. right? So actually, I, 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 I was trying to generalize our, our method, not, not about this framework, about how to solve this equation of motion to the non-harmonic and harmonic uh, potentials, right? But uh, still, uh, still, I have to admit that our, our method cannot be applied to unharmonic uh, oscillations. Mm. So far. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any uh, other question or comment? So uh, if not, uh, let's uh, uh, thank speakers again. Thank you very much.